one of the most enduring myths of climate denialism is that global warming stopped sometime in the last decade. I see it in blaring headlines on pseudoscience websites, in comments on my videos. Even some of our most distinguished journalists have been taken in. In fact, uh, it's problematic because for the last 11 years, uh, temperatures had been dropping. Some of the best data on global temperatures comes from the National Climatic Data Center. This is a map for July of 2009. The red dots mean areas warmer than the base period. The blue dots indicate cooler than the base. And you can see that parts of the globe were cooler than average. But notice all the red dots. The NCDC calculated that July was actually the fifth warmest in the instrumental record going back to 1880. This is following on the second warmest June, the fourth warmest May, and the fifth warmest boreal spring, the period from March to May. This pattern of continuing warmth is not surprising to climate scientists, but it's not what climate deniers want to hear. In 2008, one of the few remaining climate skeptics with any scientific credentials warned deniers about the cooling since 98 canard. Patrick Michaels is well known on the climate denial circuit. He writes a website called World Climate Report. In 2008, he was the keynote speaker at a climate denial conference sponsored by the Heartland Institute. The Heartland Institute is a so-called think tank that makes money by developing an intellectual case for the tobacco industry and spreading disinformation about global climate. They may have been surprised by what Dr. Michaels had to tell them. You've all seen, seen uh, articles saying that global warming stopped in 1998. Well, with all due respect, that's being a little bit unfair to the data. This is 1998 here, and it was a huge El Nino year. And the sun was very active in 1998. And so what you have, you're going to have the fall off here in temperatures, either surface temperatures, either satellite temperatures as the consequent La Nina, the bubbling up of the cold water that was trapped down there by El Nino, takes place. Dr. Michaels went on to explain the downside of spreading information that is so easily debunked. Because I want to tell you something, everybody in this audience, make an argument that you can get killed on and you will kill us all, okay? I think most people in this room are of the conclusion that global warming may be an exaggerated issue, but if you lose credibility on this issue, you lose the issue. What Dr. Michaels is trying to explain was that 1998 was a very warm year because massive amounts of stored ocean heat were released in the largest El Nino event in recorded history. That every El Nino is followed by a cooling event, a La Nina, and that this cycle can sometimes mask the underlying warming trend. In this regard, Dr. Michaels is in agreement with NASA, which made the point prominently in its most recent review of global temperatures for 2008. NASA wrote, El Nino and increasing greenhouse gases continue to be the dominant factors affecting interannual and decadal temperature change. So let's visualize the data we have over the last 20 years or so. Here's the NASA temperature record. 2005, according to NASA, is the hottest year in the instrumental record. 1998 and 2007 are tied for second warmest. 2008, slightly cooler, is the ninth warmest year. Now let's add in the El Nino cycle. Right away, you can see how large El Ninos pumped up the hot year of 1998, and smaller cycles warmed the planet in 2002 and 3 and 2007. The La Nina cooling cycles also clearly had an effect in the remaining years. But there's something amiss here. What about the early 1990s? It looks like there was an El Nino, and yet temperatures dropped. What happened here? Actually, this is the exception that proves the rule. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo, the largest volcanic eruption since 1912, blasted dust into the atmosphere and caused a global temperature drop that lasted more than a year. 
It's this pattern that Dr. Michaels was attempting to warn his audience about in 2008. What's happened, what's happened, and this is why this argument is so very, very dangerous, is that the solar activity and the El Nino, the La Nina we're in now, have conspired to add up to produce very, very little temperature change in the last couple of years, in the last few years. And so, what's going to happen, one of these years, that's going to turn around. And if you make that argument now, you're going to have a very, very difficult time defending the future. Whoops. Now, in 2009, that turnaround is happening. In July, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced that a new El Nino event had arrived. The balance of equatorial sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific had shifted from cool to warm in April this year. By midsummer, effects of the new cycle had become obvious. Even in summertime, the water along the coast of Maine can feel downright chilly. But this week, it reached 72 degrees, a full 10 degrees above normal. It's not just New England. World ocean water temperatures are heating up to the warmest on record. The oranges and reds on this map show where temperatures are warmer than normal. The darker the color, the higher the difference. The naturally occurring El Nino is partly to blame, but man-made global warming and a dose of chance are combining to heat up the average global ocean temperature. According to NOAA, this El Nino is expected to strengthen and last through the coming winter. Back in January, NASA scientists had predicted that a new cycle was coming and that when it came, a new global temperature record would likely be set in the next few years. The few remaining skeptical scientists have a fine line to walk. Dr. Michaels continues to serve a secret list of corporate clients, and yet, to maintain what's left of his professional credibility, he must occasionally deliver inconvenient facts to the denialist faithful. So, global warming is real, and the second warming of the 20th century, people have something to do with it, all right? Now get over it. The NASA Global Temperature Review also has significant things to say about where we are in the current cycle of solar activity. It's a topic I'll spend more time on in a future Climate Denial Crack of the Week. <laughs>